Hey guys, Steve Gutowski here, uh, back with another little episode of Games and Guns, a little Let's Play, um, and I'm going to be playing a little bit of Hotline Miami, the punch kick game, top down view thing with chicken heads and animal heads and so forth, one graphic violence. Um, and then also talk about the latest Obamacare ruling, which is called Halbig, or Halbig, or how how big what however you pronounce it basically it says uh that in obamacare literally written out it's subsidies for health insurance plans are only available on state created exchanges so all of the millions of people on the that ended up on the um oh, whoop, violent, all the other all the millions of people that ended up on the oh, i'm gonna beat this guy up while he pees Ha! Ah, take that for peeing. Oh, what's this weapon? Oh, it's a knife. Fun. Um, but basically, all those people on the federal exchange uh, don't won't be able to get their subsidies because that's how the law is written. <laughs> that's what the law says. And so, um, the latest development on that front is ah, no, dang. It. The latest development uh, is that one of the Obamacare architects way back in 2012, uh, before this became a real problem, uh, before the IRS issued their ruling uh, that said people could get subsidies on the federal exchange, uh, one of the architects said uh, basically that the how big plaintiffs were right, that yeah, that's how Obamacare is designed. It's meant uh, to be that the states create the exchanges. And states that don't create the exchanges don't get the subsidies for their citizens. Uh, that's how the whole thing was designed. It was an incentive to make the states pay to create the and run the exchanges. That was the whole idea. Um, and so everyone on the left is, uh, of course, freaking out about this. Oh, I bash this guy's head in. And yes, yes, no, don't crawl away. I'm violently trying to murder you. Oh God. Say so violence doesn't pay. I got, I got murdered right back. But, um, so a lot of conservatives look at this as a, a, a real victory because it basically means that Obamacare could be in real, real jeopardy. They, it could really fail if, if it's enforced the way it was actually written. And I died. Dang it. Dang it. Um... But here's the problem with that. This rule all relies on the idea that this... Oh, God. Oh, God. No. Dang you. I... No. No. You're so fast. You're so... Mm. I hate these guys. So, yes. The problem. The problem with this idea is more or less that it relies on uh, the John Roberts-led Supreme Court to overturn uh, Obamacare, more or less. Completely overturn it. And I died again. I died, I, I died again. Uh, which is, honestly, never going to happen. Besides the fact that they... You know, they already had... Dang it. Dang it. Dang it. Dang it. The Roberts Court already had the chance... God, the Roberts Court already had the opportunity to overturn Obamacare, um, obviously, in the... Oh, God! No! I can't even get past these guys. I mean, I'm, there's like three more people on this level. It's never gonna... It's never gonna work. I do like throwing the objects at them. It's pretty fun. Dang it! <laughs> but yes, uh, relying on John Roberts to overturn or effectively get, oh, relying on John Roberts to effectively remove a landmark piece of legislation is incredibly foolish because he'll never do it. And I died again. He just won't. John Roberts is extremely concerned about the image of the court. He does not want to be seen as uh, some sort of like 
conservative interloper who's just overriding democracy in order to get his way ideologically. And that's, that's his, it doesn't matter, in my opinion, it does not matter whether or not uh, how big plaintiffs are right, which they are, if you ask me, but it doesn't, it won't matter to him. It won't matter if this, how big going down this, this course of enforcing Obamacare the way it was obviously intended to be enforced will end up destroying the law because, you know, the architects of Obamacare never saw uh, it coming that states would just not participate because this is how they get states to do everything. They offer them uh, federal dollars. That's that's how they've always... That's how the federal government has always... Oh my God. That's how the federal government has always gotten states to do what they want you know that that oh god they've always you know with pretty much anything with the uh, welfare reform with social security medicare even in this very bill they do it again with with um medicaid expansion uh they they say harris states will give you lots of money if you don't accept in order to expand medicaid if you don't accept it we're going to cut uh, your other Medicaid funding you already have. Like, that's it's what they do. It's what the federal government does whenever it wants states to do something. That's just how it works. And that's how Obamacare is designed. And that's how it's, and it's always been successful in the past. It's, this is a very, very unique situation where Obamacare was so unpopular and I died again. I died again. I died again. I, I died again. Die! Yes. Obamacare was so unpopular that uh, 36 states decided that they weren't even going to bother setting up that they weren't even going to bother setting up an exchange because it was better for them politically uh, not to do so. Uh, you know, regardless of the subsidies, regardless of everything else. And oh, man, you, this game, you have to like come at the exact right angles to not get killed by these guys. And also have much better reaction time than I do. Ah! Yes. Um, and so nobody, nobody crafting law saw that coming. And that's why... Um, that's why this whole thing happened. They didn't... They never thought they were going to actually even have to set up a federal exchange. It, it was more or less a backstop in case some states just completely bombed. Or, or like there was some very minor political holdout but the idea was you know everyone's going to create these exchanges because if they don't their constituents are going to be very mad that they're not getting these subsidies um but they quickly gave up on that idea Duh, yes yes and so that's why we're at where we're at the irs tr stepped in and tried to fix the whole thing by saying oh the law doesn't say what it says so uh oh god oh god yeah. Ah, da, da. Yes, yes, no, one, yes, 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 get, let's get out of here, get out of here, and that's that, but if you're relying on the Supreme Court to uh, have a massive practical effect on a piece of legislation that of, that's of a landmark nature that Obamacare is, well, I, I think you're kind of foolish, I don't think John Roberts will ever go down that road, he, he, he twisted around the legislation in the first place to avoid doing that the last time Obamacare was challenged at the Supreme Court. He's certainly not going to do it this time. That's just what I think. So, yeah, Halbig's right. Uh, the law was definitely written that way. It's pretty freaking obvious. And it was confirmed all the more by the Obama, Obamacare architect's comments uh, back in 2012. Uh, Gruber is his name. Gruber. And the guy, it's just hilarious. The, the the whole thing is hilarious backlash. Now he's saying that he, he was it a speako, which is it's like a spoken typo. And he did it twice. And he said that's totally what happened both times. But regardless, uh, yeah, the law is written that way, very obviously, very specifically. But will that will that lead to overturn at the Supreme Court? Will, will they actually, um, will John Roberts and uh, Kennedy elect to 
actually interpret the law in the obvious way that it's written? No, they won't. They won't. I really do not think they will. So maybe, maybe they will. We'll see. But I wouldn't count on it. Anyway, I'll see you guys next time.